Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy for this opportunity to address you on this important topic. Member states have reported a total of 630,000 guns lost or stolen by the end of 2020 in the Schengen Information System database. It takes just one gun in the hands of criminals and terrorists to cause death and injury. Just last week, two police officers in Germany were shot dead during a routine traffic control. And a few weeks earlier, an 18-year-old man entered a lecture hall in Heidelberg in Germany. He shot and killed one young woman and wounded several more with a rifle and a double-barreled shotgun, legally bought in Austria, illegally brought into Germany. All of us must work together to prevent legal weapons from falling into the wrong hands. The fight against gun trafficking is a European law enforcement priority. Under MPACT, the European Multidisciplinary Platform Against Criminal Threats. Supported by Europol, national police forces recently cracked down on traffickers sending weapons by post. And last December captured more than 1,500 converted weapons in a joint operation. One and a half years ago, I launched our action plan against firearms trafficking to improve international cooperation, to crack down on gun crime and improve information and analysis. The most powerful tool I have is EU legislation. But these rules only work if they are impl implemented correctly. So I applaud France's new digital system to keep track of firearms. Tracing guns every step of the way, from production to sale and then during their whole life cycle until they are exported or destroyed or deactivated. Essential to stop legal weapons from falling into criminal hands. And a key goal of the Firearms Directive. And France is going one step further by going digital. All member states must now implement the Firearms Directive fully and correctly. Delays and mistakes cost lives. In 2020, a murder in Belgium and an attempt murder in Sweden. One year earlier, an attempt murder in Ukraine. All with weapons originally bought as low-caliber Flaubert firearms, but converted into a more lethal caliber. Exactly what the Firearms Directive is designed to stop. And sometimes lethal B and C category guns, hunting rifles, shotguns, are mislabeled as Flaubert caliber weapons, taking advantage of delays or mistakes in implementing of the directive. Last year, gangsters murdered Dutch crime journalist Peter R. de Vries with an illegally converted alarm and signal weapon. Already three years ago, in 2019, we laid down technical spe specifications to stop the conversion of these signal guns into de deadly weapons. But only a few member states carried this out. That's why the Commission has launched a total of 18 infringement procedures against 10 member states. The Commission is ready to offer advice and support to help member states to implement a directive in the best possible way. And I too have a responsibility to make sure our legislation is up to date and fit for purpose. That's why I am revising and improving the regulation on imports and exports of firearms. I want to update the regulation to close loopholes against smuggling and simplify rules to reduce burdens for legitimate businesses. I thank all of you for your contributions to the impact assessment. And we need to start thinking about the future of the Firearms Directive. How do we retain strict legal control on converted weapons? How do we better regulate blueprints for 3D printed weapons? That's the kind of questions we need to answer. 
But only when all member states have fully implemented the firearms directive can we further update and modernize it. The discussion can start today. I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you.